the candy shop. We speaking on things you not. Just press play and let it rock. Hey, welcome to the candy shop. Oh, welcome to the candy shop. We speaking on things you not. Just press play and let it rock. Hey, welcome to the candy shop. Oh, feel like we going through mad things. Gotta keep it real when they choose not. We gon' talk about it when the news drop. Welcome to the show where you know we don't fake this. Keep your opinion to yourself if it don't make sense. Hey, 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 Podcast Nation, it's your girl, Candidly Kristen, and this is The Candid Shop, your number one destination for candid conversations. If you're new here, welcome, and if you're a regular listener, welcome back and thank you for your support. Today, I am having a really special author spotlight chat with licensed clinical social worker and author of Rain to Rain, and I'm going to explain that later, Miss Cherokee Cable. Welcome, 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 Cherokee, to the Candid Shop. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be here. And oh, you're so, you're and welcome. It's, and it's Cubbell. It's Cubbell. And I asked you that, and I still am telling <laughs> you, it's absolutely been that kind of week month for me. So I, I apologize. Miss Cherokee. Cable, like Cabell. cable car. Cabell. Why do I keep saying yep. cable? I yep. have no idea. I'm just going to call you Cherokee, okay? That works for me. <laughs> Perfect. So listen, I have your book, Rain to Rain, and because I'm not video, for you people that are listening, it's Rain, R-A-I-N, to Rain, R-E-I-G-N, so that that gives you a little more, because uh, I'm sure they're like, Rain to Rain, what does that mean? But <laughs> You'll get it if you get the book, so get the book. So <laughs> I'm reading it. I, I am not all the way through it, but I'm like halfway, three quarters of the way. And it really resonates with me on a lot of levels. I don't know if you're from your book. It doesn't sound like you're originally from Camden, New Jersey, but you spent some time there. And I am born and bred a Camdenite. So that resonated. And it was really authentic, <clears throat> excuse me, and transparent. So it really is my pleasure to have this chat with you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Oh, no problem. So let's just get into it and talk to me about the why of your book, Rain to Rain. What motivated you to write it when you did or at all? So I knew a long time ago, there were some things that I wanted to do moving forward as I, um, you know, grew wiser um, the motivation really came from one of my um, friends, shout out to Tammy Riley. Woo-hoo. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. <laughs> she was really the motivating force that made, you know, made me do this. We had a conversation and multiple times she would say, Cherokee, I see a book in your future. I see a book in your future. And then it was 2022 and we were having a conversation and she's like, I don't know what you're waiting for. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to, you know, put pedal to the metal and start doing it. So I reached out to some people on Facebook. They have the New New Jersey Black owned and was looking for Mm -hmm. um, ghost writers and different things like that. So I was able to find someone to help me. A lot of the work is my own writing. Um, So my message really is that, you know, the reason behind it is to help individuals who have been, have who have gone through similar things as rain has gone through to -hmm. let them know that, you know, those things do not have to define them. They don't have to structure who you are as a person or what you want to do. It doesn't mean that you can't do the things that you want to do and Mm -hmm. that you're not alone. You can, there's people out there who have gone through similar things who you can reach out to and talk to. Um, One being myself, myself to be able to talk to, Um, And then there's different organizations who have um, foundations in trauma, my private practice, my expertise is in trauma. So this book was, is something that I can use to also help those individuals that I am working, working with. Okay. So as I'm reading your book, um, like I said, it resonated with me on a lot of levels, but it kind of uh, delves into personal growth, transformation, 
healing from tra- trauma. And my question to you is, did this book inspire you to become an LCSW or were you already an LCSW when you wrote it? I was already an LCSW okay. when I did. I graduated from Rucker University in 2013 and um, pursued to get my LCSW doing clinical work. So okay. I had already the the education and the background to write the book. Um, okay. So it really wasn't until, you know, COVID, I say sometimes is a blessing in disguise. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was it was really then when I buckled down and was able to really receive from my friend to say, you know, this is the time to really, you know, get it done. Um, so I, I already had that education prior to reading, to writing the book. Okay. okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. You know what else I really like about the book is how you have the, uh, the blank line pages at the end of each chapter for, you know, introspection for, for the reader to write down their thoughts and, you know, I really, really like that. I've seen, this is like third time I, I've seen this in a book, one of which was a children's book. And I thought this is really cool that, you know, there's this space to kind of digest what you just read, put your own thoughts to paper. Um, I think journaling is an awesome, awesome way to uh, to heal from trauma. It helped me. So uh, I like that a lot. So thank you for that. Of course. Um, that was that was a big part of the book when I did um, get down to the edits and things like that. I wanted people to have a place where they can, like you said, process their thoughts and feelings because it's not when when I talk about the book, I will always say, you know, it's not an easy read. It's not like um, Dr. Seuss, you know, right, it's going right. to bring up some some things for you. So having those pages, I think, is very beneficial. And I'm a person who loves to, you know, my my thing is to educate, inspire, and empower other people. And I think, mm. I'm hoping, this book gives, you know, people that opportunity to be empowered, inspired, and educated. Nice. It's three of my favorite words. <laughs> um, so kind of moving off of the book directly, but still in the the book vein, um, I'm a firm believer that representations matters in literature and life, um, just uh, in general, representation matters. So can you share with me any thoughts you have on the importance of representation um, in books, especially ones that touch on personal journeys or mental health challenges? I think okay. that it, it's extremely important Um you know, my, my biggest thing is I, I like to, you know, lead by example. So a lot of the skills that were in the book, I've used in my personal life to Mm -hmm. help with either, you know, low self-esteem, um, you know, setting boundaries, different things. So a lot of what I quote unquote preach, you know, I practiced as well. So the representation is, is to me, it's, it's huge. I think that's how you're able to resonate with people and relate to people um, if you're true to what you're trying to represent. Absolutely. I agree. Um, Like to piggyback off what you said, your book is not an easy read. It's not, you know, sunshine and light, uh, although it is that, but there's, you know, there are some darker uh, moments, experiences in your life that you were very transparent and sharing. And so my question to you is, uh, writing those things, knowing that someone's going to read this or many someones, um, how did you navigate that process of uh, sharing the really vulnerable, super transparent moments in your life, in your book? So I want, I, the biggest thing is I want also people to understand this is, you know, this is Rain's story. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some, maybe there are some parallels to my life, but in learning what I've learned in my education and working with, you know, different diverse backgrounds and individuals, I was able to put, put a lot of these, those experiences into my book. Um, Even just working with individuals who have experienced these things, it's not an easy thing to hear these stories, let alone right. write about them. 
and then have to reread them and edit them and reread them and edit them. I think for me, the biggest piece was the writing and then having to edit, proofread, go back and reread and different things right. like that. I had right. to, just like when I, my, my private practice, I have to sort of come outside myself and look at it from a different lens. Um, okay. So a little bit of healthy, I would say dissociation mm -hmm. um, because it, it can get to a point of internalizing it. Um, but that's not to say writing it, I wasn't shedding tears, you know, mm -hmm. going back and reading it. it. It is a very vulnerable story. Like I said, there are some parallels in our story. So, you know, those parts, I had to make sure that I, self-care is huge, huge, right. huge, huge. Right. I had to make sure that I was taking care of myself when I was too overwhelmed. I had to, you know, stop. I had to mm -hmm. go enjoy my family. I had to go enjoy, you know, things that I like to do, exercising, dancing, playing the violin. I had to put myself in a different arena so I can take care of myself and then right. come back and, you know, do another paragraph or a page. Nice. Very good. And um, I've done a lot of author interviews and I'm always curious about the process I've, I've talked to writers that say, I just sit and I write, 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 write with no outline, no forethought. And then I go back and, and, and rewrite. Um, there are others who have an outline and they kind of follow that. So what's your process like um, from beginning to end when you're writing a book or my this book? My process for writing this book was really just to write. Um, mm. I had I had the stories. I right. had the um, information, so it was just writing, 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 and then going back and then, you know, doing the edits and proofreading and different things like that, going back and seeing, you know, what stories did I really want to tell, which ones were most important to put into the book, and Got then it. going through and, you know, the educational piece, what relates to what the story is about, right. what do I feel I want people to learn from this section of the book, and even even with the the growth activities, you know, yeah, things that I've done to help myself in certain situations and which ones were most helpful. Um, and then also not overwhelming the reader with a whole bunch of education or a whole bunch of skills. Um, but these are skills that are very, they're not time consuming at all. They're very easy. Right. Sit, sitting anywhere, doing anything. So, um, that was, that was mainly my process to make sure to keep my reader in mind and just to keep reading um, and seeing what was important that I wanted the reader to be able to hold on to. Right. And I like the, the healing and growth parts that I see. Um, I'm a huge uh, proponent of boundary setting. I think that where there's a lack of boundaries, there's a lack of respect for self and how others treat you. So I really like like that um the setting boundaries part i like that uh like i'm a stats person i love statistics and data like raw data but everybody doesn't when they're reading a book and right. i like that you included it but it wasn't like um it was done in a way that anybody could clearly understand it wasn't just like numbers and, and statistics and charts and stuff that people are like ugh. I'm gonna skip over this because the <laughs> the the education is important. The, the piece uh, uh, that you include are important pieces, and people need to know when you read that one in, and this is not an actual statistics. People one in every four uh, women are abused on so many. You know, in this period, it's right. important that shows people number one they're not the only one, um, and that. There are other people going through this, have gone through this, have overcome this. So I think that's really important. So you touched on it when you talked to me about the why of the book, but what specific message or takeaway would you like the readers of this book to get? I think the biggest one is that you're not alone. I want people to be able to 
understand that, you know, yes, this has happened to, to me, but I'm not the only person. There's so many people who have gone through so many different experiences who don't share because they feel alone. And right. in that aloneness comes depression. And in mm-hmm. that depression comes self-harm right. and low self-esteem. And right. with those things, we start making unhealthy choices. Mm-hmm. Rather, it's the women we're with or the men that we're with, um, people we surround ourselves with, drugs and alcohol, mm-hmm. different things. So when you're feeling alone, there's so many different things that can happen with that uh, that feeling aloneness. Right. So I think the biggest message is that you're you're not alone. Right. Okay. And I did get that from the book. Um, I also got you're not you're what you went through. That mm-hmm. was a that was a big message that kind of resonated as I'm reading it, is that you are absolutely not your experiences while our our lived experience absolutely kind of play into the sum of who we are as we as we grow and heal. You're not that any specific one experience, negative experience, especially so. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And being able to identify, yes, these things have happened to me. And what am I going to do differently about them? Right. What can I, how can I use this? A lot of those experiences, if we're looking at the similarities in rain story to my life story, you right. know, I, I've used, um, I've grown a lot from just learning more about myself and how trauma shows up in the day to day and Mm -hmm. how I don't want it to be like that. And I don't want to live live my life through my trauma. I'm so much more than that. Absolutely. Now, did you self-publish or? Yes. Okay. Okay. So that, that leads me into my next question. What advice would you give someone listening that, you know, believes they have a story to tell, who's an aspiring author, especially one who is considering writing something that kind of is memoirish and shares their personal story? What advice would you give to those folks looking to put pen to paper and write a book? I would... I would say to them to really make sure that you're in the mindset to do it because like I like I said if if it's a if it's a book about different experiences that may not be all sunshines and rainbow you have to be able to externalize those experiences to get through writing that book and making sure that you are taking care of yourself surrounding yourself with people who are going to support you The Mm -hmm. next thing that I would tell them, if you are reaching out for assistance with um, writing to vet your, vet the people, make sure that they, you know, check in on their references, making sure that they um, are going to do what they say they're going to do. And what you're, what you're really looking for them to do, make sure they're able to do that. my, My experience, I, the book may almost didn't get published because okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to throw it away and forget about it. And I, yeah. I was, yes, I was so ready to be done with it, but make sure that you are working with people who know exactly what you're needing from them. They're able to um, give that to you. So making sure you're doing your due diligence in that and asking questions. Um, and the last thing would be just to do it. What do you have to lose? Right, right. There you go. Just do it. Because they say everybody's got one one book mm-hmm. in them. And I believe that to be true, especially if it's a personal story. So um, I'm really glad that because when I was reading the book, it came across to me as a memoir. And I'm glad that you clarified that it, while it paralleled in some ways your life, it was not your memoir. I've, I've experienced similar things in my life. I don't want my readers to read this book and say, oh, poor Cherokee. I'm so sorry. She right, right. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a professional. I work with individuals all the time. And my biggest thing is, you know, that was one of the things about writing the book. You know, how are people going to take this? How are my clients going to respond to the things that are in this book? Or am I going to be looked 
looked at as um, a victim. Right. Am I going right. to be, you know, are they going to say, I'm so sorry you went through that? You know, are you okay? And that's not what I want. So, right. Got um, it. Got it. The, again, some, some of the, the experiences in the book are, are parallel to, to my life, but it, it's a story about Rain, a little girl who, you know, has went through these things and has come out at the other end. So um, if you're reading the book, I want you to look at it as Rain's story. I want you to take the author out of it myself. Right. And I want you to resonate with Rain, the little girl who's experiencing these things. Got it. Got it. Awesome. So what's next for you, um, both as an LCSW and an author? Are there new books, other books that you're considering doing, other things that uh, my listeners might be interested in learning about? Like what's what's on the horizon for Cherokee? So I am considering other books. I've talked about or thought about a children's book, taking rain to rain to a children's book. Mm. Um, and then there's other ideas that I have outside of the rain to rain arena. I'm doing workshops. I'm in the process of getting some, um, taking the book and utilizing it for educational purposes in my workshops. Mm -hmm. Um, with my private practice, I'm that's, that's part of the workshops, but also with my private practice, I'm of course growing that. Um, I will be, attending a marketing event um i don't i'm i think you're in williamstown i think i'm in willingboro but willingboro. williamstown yeah yeah it's a little south so, of me. um so in camden county um there's a mental health fair september 28th from 11 to 3 that i will be attending so okay. um, if your listeners want to come and meet me um, i will be holding a couple of 15 minute consultations This is also an opportunity for um, individuals to pick up my book for a discounted rate um, Mm -hmm. from Amazon. So I will be having my book there. I will be doing some signings of my book. So that's an opportunity for them to come out. Um, And I think that's enough. Um, Right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So I mean, I'm still working, doing my private practice, taking in um, new clients. I work with, um, adults 18 years of age and older, okay. um, anxiety, depression, of course, trauma, I do couples, stress management, anger, self-development, career development. Um, so any any listeners who are like, okay, well, I need to, you know, start changing some things, you know, definitely I'm open to um, taking in new clients. I think for right now, that's what I'm really focusing on is doing some workshops and um, expanding my clientele. Nice, nice. Well, I wish you all the best. I'm sure that you're going to have a thriving practice if you don't already. And uh, I love the book. I suggest to anybody that's listening, um, whether or not you've been through any trauma that you recognize as trauma, because I think we all have traumas. Um, This is an excellent book. So I advise you to get it. So Miss Cherokee, that is the the end of our formal chat but as anybody who's listening knows i always end my chats by playing a fun fun game called 10 candy questions okay (laughs) so just 10 random questions only one rule you have to answer them candidly so are you ready i am all right what is your biggest pet peeve my biggest pet peeve is I don't even know. Goodness. <laughs> Liars, can that be a pet peeve? Absolutely. There you it's go. It's one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause why are you lying? And people yeah. lie about the most insignificant stuff. I'm like, why are you lying about that? Okay. All right. I don't I get can. it. Yeah. So I would say yeah. liars is my pet peeve. That's number Okay. One. All right. Um, next question. Are you an introvert or extrovert? Definitely intro. And okay. COVID, like I said, is a blessing in disguise. I used it for everything. Can't come to you. COVID. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hear that. 
Um, cause I am the same. I tell people all the time, yeah, 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 I'm coming. Nah, I don't go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, next question. What do people misunderstand the most about Cherokee? Very good question. I think they misunderstand that I am really a loving, compassionate, gentle person. They see this exterior and sometimes how I present is not what is really who I am. So I think okay. they misunderstand my compassion, my gentleness, and my loving. Okay. All right. Um, coffee or tea? Tea. Okay. I'm a coffee girl, but I like tea, <laughs> but coffee is my thing. Um, <laughs> all right. If you had the entire world's undivided attention for five minutes, what would you say? Oh, goodness. Um, I would say dream big, believe in yourself. Anything is possible. Okay. All right. Uh, morning person or night owl? Morning. Okay. I go to bed at like nine o'clock. <laughs> okay. Got you. Got you. What one word, one single word sums up who Cherokee is? Ambitious. Okay. Good word. All right, next question. What is your favorite curse word? Can I say it or? <laughs> Absolutely. This is the candy what? shop. <laughs> Let me tell you, I don't think, I maybe had somebody say shit, but, for, but overwhelmingly, that's everybody's favorite curse word because it just fits a whole bunch of scenarios. Yes, it works for everything and it feels yeah. so good coming good. out. <laughs> Indeed. I was watching some Facebook thing and she was like, shut the fuck up. Shut all the way the fuck up. Shut yeah. go to the fuck up the top of the mind yeah. until you can't <laughs> no fuckers or something. Like oh yes. my god, it's just sometimes it's perfect. Just perfect. Gosh. Okay. So what's one question you wished I'd asked you during our chat and how would you have answered it? One question that I wish you, um, I don't have one. I think you did a pretty good job. Nice. And see, that's my little sneaky way of, of trying to, that question is usually in this game because it gives me feedback. And when somebody says a question, I go, oh yeah, I should have definitely, you know, asked that and kind of helps me to, to do better as an interviewer. So thank I you. I appreciate it. I can tell you the one that was most uncomfortable for me. Which one? Um, the one about the memoirs and if this is a personal, like a personal story about gotcha. my life. I think that, not to say that it wasn't a good question. It really wasn't. I was, ex I was expecting it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just an uncomfortable one because, gotcha. of, because of the nature of the book. Right. Right. I certainly understand that. All right. And 10th and final question, which is the same for everyone. How can my listeners connect with you, your practice and get your book? So you can get my book on Amazon, um, Rain to Rain, R-A-I-N to R-E-I-G-N. Um, you can contact me via my website, um, www.lbc slash t.com. Um, or you can email me littlebitscounseling at gmail.com or contacting me via phone, 856-553-1779. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Cherokee, for your time, for this book that I think is awesome. Um, if my eye wasn't hurting, I'd finish reading it today. But <laughs> Oh, this thing is just awful. And guys, Cherokee's contact info, her website links, links to uh, the book on Amazon will all be in the show notes. They'll be clickable. So you don't have to write anything down because when the show airs, everything will be in the show notes, all her modes of contact. So if you're listening and you're like, I, I kind of feeling her, maybe, you know, I'll reach out for some therapy or, you know, just to chat. All of that will be in the contact in the show notes, all her contact info. So I want you guys to not forget to visit my website at www.thecandidshop.com. That's candid with a K. Listen to this episode or any of the others 
drop me a review, share the show, and go get her book. It really is a good one. Rain, R-A-I-N, to Rain, R-E-I-G-N, by Cherokee. Cabell. Cabell. <laughs> you see, I, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, Jesus, Kristen, get it together. <laughs> oh, my God. So, guys, until the next time, you know, I want you all to keep it safe, keep it healthy, and keep it candid. <laughs>